So hello everyone. I would like to talk about Swarm on mobile because the last few months I was working with the Swarm team, getting, um, getting it ready for mobile. And why would you want to do that? So um, historically, mobile devices were very limited things compared to what we have in 2008. That was the second generation of iPhone. It was called 3G for some reason. And it had 16 gigabytes of storage space. Um, compared to that, what we have now is an iPhone XS, which has 500 gigabytes of space. And in 10 years, we don't even know how a mobile phone will look like, but we can predict um, how much space it will have. So if we assume that the growth of the storage space won't stop, then we can assume that in 2028, um, we will have, sorry. Yeah, okay. So we will have, mobile devices in our pocket with terabytes of space, storage space. Also, the network uh, uh, bandwidth that you could access from a mobile phone increased at least 200 times in the last years. And if we assume that the growth is not going to be 200 times again, only 20 times, then it's still 4 gigabytes per second. So that's pretty much. CPU, yeah. The gigahertz is not going to grow anymore, but the number of cores are going to grow. That means that the capacity, what we have on a mobile phone, will be pretty big. So that means that eventually, a mobile phone in your pocket will be a good device to run Swarm nodes, because it will have a lot of capacity and resources to do that. And also, it will be able to store all your personal data, so that if you don't want to share it with anyone, you can just have it in your pocket. And if you want to store it with someone, then you can do it with, with uh, Swarm. But we are now in 2028, just 2018, so let's see what we have now, and then let's try to figure out what we can do with Swarm. So, there are um, basically a few ways how you can use Swarm now. Uh, but basically, right now you have two choices. You can, uh, you can access Swarm through a gateway, or you can run a Swarm local node. If you are using a gateway, you trust someone else's computer to, uh, with your data, and as you heard before, you cannot use encryption and features like that. So if you are security conscious, you should run a local Swarm node. But there are use cases where it's not necessary. And um, actually, with, uh, uh, right now, uh, we have many ways to, to access Swarm. Uh, for example, we have the command line, uh, which has uh, the Swarm command line tool, which has every features that are available except for PSS, uh, and but it's not too comfortable to use. Uh, there is Erebus from mainframe, um, which is a bit different in, in philosophy. Uh, but it doesn't support that much features. You have the HTTP uh, and REST APIs and WebSocket APIs. Um, you can do, you, you can access Swarm with that, but that's not too easy to use. You have a Go client. It's easy to use uh, if, you, if you know Go. If you don't, then it sucks. Uh, but it has all the features, so that's a good thing. And you also have JavaScript. And in JavaScript, you have Web3.js, Swarm.js, Airbus, and Swarm.gv. The last one is only a library for accessing gateways, so it's limited. And Web3.js currently using Swarm.js for BZZ, so it's kind of the same thing. Uh, the only difference is that Web.js gives you a lot of different Web3 functionality, like account management, and all the, all the crypto codes are there, and everything. So it's um, sometimes you want to use that, and then you get a big package of everything. And there is also Airbus, who, as you heard, uh, that's the mainframe library, uh, and their philosophy is making things easier. And I think that's 
what we heard today is mainframe OS is a evolution of that or taking it to a higher level even. So this ease of use, take it with a grain of salt, it's my personal subjective judgment, but that's what I experienced. And um, so these are these were the client libraries, and there is also another way to use Farm on mobile, uh, because uh, um, so because if you want to run Swarm right now on your mobile phone, what will happen is that you will your battery will die soon because it will start sinking, it will fill your disk space, it will use your data package, and you won't be too happy. So somehow we need to introduce some kind of limitations. And uh, basically what we came up with is that we disable syncing, we don't store files on a light node, we, disable, we reject the subscription messages, we reject the retrieval messages, the light nodes do not count into the Kademlia saturation, meaning that uh, they don't part, they are not active part of the Kademlia network, but we want to make it so that they can be still addressed so that PSS messages can get to it. Um, then we need cross-platform library and build files, and eventually we want uh, the light node uh, so that it can be switched on the fly between normal and light mode, because sometimes it's, use, 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 uh, it's useful to um, to switch between the two, for example, when you are uh, in a limited uh, data package or whatever. Uh, so what I'm thinking is that maybe uh, on mobile, you, you want sometimes the full node functionality. For example, if you have an iPad, and if it's on the charger, and you want to sync files, then it might be powerful enough right now. So that was the goal that we set for ourselves. Um, how does this work? We cross-compile the Go library, and we create native language bindings to it. So then you can link with your application statically. And then when you start your application, you start Swarm, swarm inside with the configuration. And after that, you can either call the native API through the bindings, or you can use the web API, as we have seen before. So basically, this is how it looks like. Your application lives there. You run code. When you need something from Swarm, you can choose to use the bindings to communicate with the Swarm light node, or you can use the HTTP calls through the web API. And at this point, we, we would rather keep the bindings small, because most of the functionality you can achieve through the web API and for a light node, it's not, uh, it's not that uh, uh, performance critical to, uh, to not use HTTP, for example. So, and uh, by keeping the binding small, you don't have to uh, do a lot of code on all platforms that you want to support. So that's the project that we were working on uh, with with the Swarm team and with, the, with some status guys. And so we set two phases and several tasks in phase zero. And in phase zero, our goal is to be able to start a light node on mobile. So that's not too ambitious, but still. And the second goal is to be able to switch between light and normal node on the fly. So where we are in this, um, we made some progress already with the handshake protocol, disable syncing is already merged, and the Kademlia and the cross-platform library and build, we have um, pull requests for both, right now only uh, for iOS, so that's why it's not completely ready, but we expect it to be ready by end of this year, and by the first quarter of next year we want to get to be able to switch on the fly between the two things. And I would like to show you a showcase. I worked on a small app. It's a social app on Swarm. Um, this is the onboarding. Uh, you give your name. You can upload an avatar. And after that, you can take photos, and then you can upload it to Swarm. 
Uh, if you press this button, it will be shared. It's private by default, so you have to explicitly share things. And then it creates a, a feed that you can share with others, and then others can follow uh, things that you posted. And right now it uses the gateway, so everything is public. But eventually, when there is a light node, then we can add more private features. And also, it has a feature where you can follow other feeds and also RSS feeds, which, interestingly, it's a distributed or decentralized Web2 technology, which still exists. So we thought, why not? You can do that too. So, um, so it's, a, it's like that. And the app architecture right now is that we have this social app, and it's communicating with the Swarm gateway. But eventually, when we have the light node, then we will have what I, we will have the the full light node functionality with encryption, and that enables enables new features like private sharing and private groups and private communication everywhere. And one more thing I wanted to talk about is that how you can um, how you can share feeds publicly uh, on on a swarm. It's very easy or at least we chose to do it very easy. So imagine you have three posts, you create a, a feed out of it, and you put, uh, I mean, let's say that you, we create a feed with your last 20 posts. And then when you post a new post, then we remove the last one and add the new one, and we update the feed with your last 20 posts. So it will give you a different hash, and we share this new hash on the, uh, on the feed, on the Swarm feed. And then others can, uh, basically right now, the, uh, you have to poll the, the Swarm feed to see if there is new data. But since you only store a hash in it, it's not too expensive. So, and also, if this, the hash does not change, you don't have to download the data because you know that you already have it. So it's very simple, but it works. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot show you it working right now. Um, but I, I was working on this um, since last Wednesday, uh, making swarm, especially making Swarm feeds working, because that was something new uh, for me. And the good thing is that Swarm feeds are working. The bad thing is my app is not working at the moment. But I will still work on it this week. So. If you are interested in this and you want to try it, or if you are interested in development uh, of this, then find me and then I will show it to you and then we can talk about this. So this was my presentation, the Swarm on Mobile. Any questions? So how do you make the, the feed discoverable? Basically, like wh where's the place to go look? So right now, there is no such feature. We plan to do it later. Uh, right now, it's actually your friends can, can share feeds with you. Basically, by showing a QR code, you scan it, and then you follow them. Um. And, and they can share other feeds with you. So it works the same with every share. It's not only your share, uh, not only your feed that you can share with others. So if you have, like, if you find something, then you can you can also share it with your friends. But basically, once you know the feed head, then you can always follow it and follow the updates. Yeah. Okay. So then you could probably like package it together that like you can share bundles of feeds. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Hi. Um, have you thought about combining um, the Swarm Light client with like features from the Ethereum Light client um, to do any kind of like interesting new functionality? Or are you just only using kind of the Swarm Light node right now? At this point, I'm only using Swarm. OK. I'm just curious. Thanks. Questions? If not, then uh, thank you, Attila. Thank you.